You have just finished the surgical procedure for removal of teeth with intravenous sedation. This video will review with you the proper care of the surgical sites, including what is expected in a normal postoperative course and what would be considered abnormal. Do not worry about forgetting some of this information because before leaving today, you will be given written instructions and our contact information. Should you misplace this information sheet, the postoperative instructions can also be found on our website, guyettesurgery.com. Following the removal of teeth, moistened gauze are placed directly over the extraction sites and you are asked to bite firmly until the local anesthetic is worn off and the lips and tongue are no longer numb. Biting on the gauze serves two purposes. The first is to stop bleeding and allow for proper clot formation and the second to prevent accidentally biting the cheek, lips or tongue which are still numb. We ask that you bite firmly and consistently, and if you must talk, talk with your teeth squeezed tightly together. Because of the effects of sedation, you may forget this instruction, and we ask your escort to remind you to keep biting together until the numbing medicine has completely worn off. Occasionally, the effects of IV sedation will make you feel emotional. This feeling will wear off as the sedation medication is metabolized. Once the effects of the numbing medication wear off, usually within one to three hours, remove the gauze and drink or eat something light, such as yogurt, pudding, or juice. You may then take pain medication. For those who are not allergic or taking blood thinning medication, the over-the-counter medication ibuprofen, also known as Advil or Motrin, works well as a primary pain reliever. For adults, two or three tablets of ibuprofen should be taken four times per day at breakfast, lunch, dinner, and bedtime with a snack for three consecutive days following surgery. Children may take one or two tablets four times a day based on weight. Narcotic pain medications such as Vicodin or Darvacet is frequently prescribed to help with postoperative discomfort, not controlled by ibuprofen. Take this medication as directed on the bottle. You may alternate the prescription pain medication with ibuprofen or even take it at the same time if necessary. At times, antibiotics are also prescribed. The instructions on a bottle will guide you in when to take this medication. It is best not to take any medication on an empty stomach as it may cause nausea. Please continue your normal medications after your first meal. Remember, do not drive for four hours after taking prescription pain medication and do not take other sedative medications or drink alcohol for four hours before or after taking narcotic pain medication. Nausea and vomiting are an unwelcome but occasional occurrence after removal of teeth with IV sedation. The two main causes of nausea are taking pain medication, especially on empty stomach, and swallowing a significant amount of blood after surgery. Bleeding is normal and expected part of surgery and actually begins the healing process. The chance of postoperative nausea can be minimized by taking narcotic pain medication only if needed and then only if you have something in your stomach and by biting firmly and consistently on the gauze until the feeling has completely returned to your lips and tongue. This minimizes the amount of oozing. If nausea persists over 24 hours or vomiting occurs more than three times, call our office. Normally, it is not necessary to replace the gauze after they've been removed. Slight oozing is normal and may continue throughout the day and into the evening. However, brisk and persistent bleeding is considered abnormal and may require additional measures. Tea bags can be moistened and placed directly over the extraction sites. Moistened gauze can also be used, but tea contains tannic acid which constricts blood vessels and provides an even better solution. Remember, the moistened tea bags or gauze must be placed directly over the extraction sites. Bite firmly and continuously for 90 minutes to stop bleeding. If you try this and are still unsuccessful in stopping the bleeding, please call our office. After removing teeth, it is important to keep your mouth clean, but also not to be so vigorous that the blood clot, which naturally forms in the extraction site, becomes dislodged and a dry socket results. For the first 24 hours, do not rinse or irrigate your mouth. You should, however, gently floss and brush your teeth with toothpaste the night of surgery and lean forward and gently let the toothpaste come out, but do not spit. 
After 24 hours, begin gentle salt water rinses three to four times per day with a mild salt water solution consisting of one half teaspoon of salt and one half glass of water. Salt water is antibacterial, gentle, and promotes healing. Mouthwashes such as Listerine and Scope contain alcohol and are too stringent for the healing sites and should not be used for two weeks after surgery. Do not use straws for one week as this may also dislodge the blood clot. You will be given a syringe today and on day seven, begin gently irrigating the surgery sites after eating and before you go to bed until sufficient healing has occurred, usually within 10 to 14 days. Gentle irrigation removes bacteria and food particles that can collect in the extraction sites, especially lower teeth. Dry socket is a well-recognized occurrence associated with removal of teeth. Should the blood clot that naturally forms at each extraction site become dislodged, the bone which held the tooth in place is exposed. This is called a dry socket and almost always happens with the lower teeth, causing a constant aching pain, usually beginning three to five days after surgery. If you are initially doing well, but then develop severe persistent pain, contact your office for an appointment. Dry socket is treated by placing a medicated packing into the site. This packing effectively treats the pain within 30 minutes and is changed every two to five days for about 10 days. Dry sockets are not infections, not treated with antibiotics, and do not influence the long-term healing process. If a bone graft was placed into the extraction site to maintain bone for later dental implant placement, expect that a few bone particles will escape over the next several days. A tan-colored membrane is placed over the extraction site at the time of surgery to hold the particles in place. This membrane and the sutures holding the membrane in place will dissolve over the next two weeks. Beginning 24 hours after surgery, gently rinse with salt water four times daily for two to three weeks in addition to normal brushing and flossing. Do not irrigate forcefully in the area of the bone graft as this may rinse out the bone graft particles. When a bone graft is placed, you are prescribed antibiotics. Please remember to take them. Dry socket does not occur when the extraction site has been grafted. However, it is certainly still possible to have post-operative soreness as a normal course of healing. Smoking, of course, increases the risk of dry socket and delays normal healing. It is strongly recommended that you discontinue smoking for at least five days following oral surgery. Swelling is a normal body response to surgery and usually peaks on the second or third day and then begins to resolve. Sometimes medication is given before surgery to minimize facial swelling associated with removal of teeth. After surgery, cold packs such as bags of frozen peas or crushed ice can be placed over the cheeks, 20 minutes on and 20 minutes off for the first day. Slight head elevation when sleeping for the first three to four days is helpful in minimizing swelling. Lying flat or bending over may increase swelling. Good nutrition is a very important part of ensuring quick healing. The evening of surgery, you may eat soft foods such as fish, chicken, and pasta. Protein shakes and drinks can assist in getting the appropriate balance of calories. Avoid foods with seeds, popcorn, rice, and hard vegetables which can become lodged in the extraction sites and cause infection. Light exercise, such as evening walks, can begin the day following your surgery, but avoid lifting, heavy objects, bending, or returning to strenuous activity for several days. The return to normal activities depends on your age, level of activity, and the extent of your surgical procedure. Normally, you may resume wearing orthodontic retainers the night of surgery. However, if wearing a retainer or other removable dental appliance causes soreness, wait one or two days and try again. For longer or more complex oral surgery procedures, you will be scheduled for a post-operative appointment to evaluate the healing process. For routine tooth removal, you will be given the option of scheduling a post-surgical appointment today or scheduling later if there is a question or concern about the healing process. If you elect to not schedule for the follow-up appointment and find the numbness has not worn off completely within 24 hours, please call and schedule an appointment for a follow-up. Increasing swelling after three days, fever over 101 degrees, and pussy drainage are considered abnormal and would also require a follow-up examination. By the time you leave the office today, you should have a clear understanding of how to take care of the surgical sites. 
Do not hesitate to ask us if you are uncertain about any part of your treatment or post-operative care. We are available day and night, seven days a week, should you have any urgent problems. Once you are home and you have a question about how to care for the surgery site, refer to the written instructions that will be given to you today. If you misplace these instructions, you can review them on our website, guyettesurgery.com. If, after reviewing these instructions, you still have a question or concern, please call our office. If it is after hours, you will be giving instructions on how to contact me or the doctor on call. On behalf of the entire staff, I want to thank you for choosing us for your oral surgery needs. Our goal at the Guyot Facial and Oral Surgery Center is to consistently provide the best, safest, and most advanced facial and oral surgical treatment to those patients who entrust their care to us. Should you have suggestions on how we might improve our service, please let us know. If we can be of further assistance to you, your family, or friends, just give us a call.